Many types and shapes of axes, double axes, maces, and hammers from this archaic period have been found on mainland Greece, the Aegean, and Anatolia. Mycenaean Greece placed great importance on the battle axe, used for ritual as well as a tool and weapon. It is believed that the ancient Greek battle axes may have been ceremonially dedicated to the mother goddess. Homer tells us that Mycenae was home to King Agamemnon, leader of the Greeks in the Trojan War. In another epic written during the same age, the Mahabharata of India records the Parashu or battle axe as the weapon of Shiva that was given to Parashurama, Rama with the axe. The legendary Parashu received by Parashurama from the god Shiva was described as having four cutting edges, one on each end of the blade and one on each end of the shaft, a description that fits the battle axe found with armor one bronze muscle cuirass, and a helmet with a gecko crest in Mindanao, Philippines. These battle axes may have been effective close combat weapons used by the Greek soldiers in East Asian context. Battle Axe 1 shows wear on the blade and spear edges. The parachute was considered the most lethal close combat weapon known in the epics. Iconography and design elements are consistent with classical Greece like the Gorgonion, which features prominently on the axe blade, representing the goddess of war and master strategist. Phoenician elements include an enemy flower from which the upper spear point and a flailing weapon emerge, known in Greek design as the rosette. Repeating geometric shapes, triangles and circles, along with stylized flowers and curling vines, form patterns recognizable as those used by the ancient Greeks. Four armored elephants displayed prominently on both battle axes indicate that they may have been used or were familiar with battle elephants. For these warriors to reach the Philippine Islands, they may have encountered both China and India who used Asiatic elephants in battle from a very early age. Phoenicians had a trading colony in Cyprus where they established connections with mainland Greece. Both the Phoenicians and Greeks had settled colonies in Spain, the Phoenician colony of Gadir in the early 1st millennium BC, while the Greeks founded the Iberian colony of Emporion in the 6th century BC. Phoenicians and Greeks were in relatively friendly competition as they exchanged goods, cultures, and beliefs. Settling foreign lands and building ancient ports to sustain the maritime trade boom from the 8th to 6th century BC. Did this frenzy of colonization, in order to facilitate international trade and enrich their motherland, reach all the way to the Philippine archipelago? Could these sets of armor from the same archaic Greek age of expansion fill in the gaps of our missing national memories? In a collection of documents that listed the Greeks as one of those who had settled in these lands, Father Pedro Chirino, Spanish historian, also noted the Greek influences in the Tagalog language. Tagalog shares in four qualities of the four greatest languages in the world, namely Hebrew, Greek, Latin, and Spanish. With the Greek, the articles in the declension of nouns and in the conjugations, the abundance of voices and moods.